Hello, welcome to Making Creativity Pay. With the Edinburgh Fringe in full swing, I spoke to a number of performers about the marketing and promotional aspects of the Fringe. Thanks very much for coming on the podcast. Can you tell us who you are and a little bit about the show? My name's Lisa O'Hare. My show is called Do You Remember the First Rhyme? And it's a poetry and storytelling show about rediscovering my creativity in my 40s. Hi, my name is JJ Pyle, and my show is How to Find a Husband in 37 Years or Longer. Have you performed at the Edinburgh Fringe before, or is this your first time? What kind of things are you looking forward to most? I haven't performed in Edinburgh before. I've performed at other fringes. This is the first time I've performed in Edinburgh, but I have been for decades as a punter and absolutely adored it and going to Edinburgh Fringe is what has put it in my head that I want to perform at all. My show is about my failed relationships and my father um, and my father's failed relationships. So it's about love. And then my director said to me, "Mm, is this about love? (laughs) And I said, okay, it's about hope. It's more about what not to do, how I've managed to not find a husband in more than 37 years. And this is my first time at Fringe and I'm completely self-produced. I've just kind of figured it out all on my own. Um, I have been wanting to come here for a long time. Uh, I first did the New York Fringe in 2009 and that's when I learned about the the Edinburgh, the big bad one over here. And so here we are. Uh, I got recommendations from people who have been here before, and I just looked for publicists, figured out how to order things from out of hand, and figured out how to get a venue, and here we are. Um, The thing that I'm looking forward to the most is doing this many shows this many days in a row and seeing how it changes me as a performer to get in in five minutes, do a show, get out, move on flyer promote your own show um it just seems like an impossible task but so far the festival has exceeded my expectations in every way it's been great the people are great the performances have been great i can't wait to see how it ends when it comes to flyering what's your strategy do you spray and pray or you're a bit more targeted i've never actually flyered before so yeah it will be a spray and pray but I'm actually looking forward to it, having been flyered to so many times in the past. It's my turn to try flyering. So I have started flyering, and I heard a lot about hiring people to flyer, finding the right people to flyer for you, and I didn't do it before I got here. So I've been flyering myself, and my team was flying with me. Um, a couple of them have left, but I found that flyering myself close to my venue before and after the show. Also, I was flying at a coffee shop across the street, which got a lot of attention. A lot of people there wanted to talk to me, but then I got kicked out because I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to fly at the coffee shop. I start off with saying, are you looking for a husband? Which is a good opener because my show is called How to Find a Husband in 37 Years or Longer. Um, And it seems people want to talk to me about their husbands, whether they've been married for 30, 40, 50. I got one 63 years. They had been married for 63 years. How is that even possible? Also, a lot of people are there with their husbands and they're like, no, I don't want another husband. Um, (laughs) It does open up the conversation and people want to talk about their husbands um, or looking for husbands. I had one big poster down in the Cowgate and um, it got a big penis painted on my face. (laughs) which was good for flyering. We went down there the next day and um, we're taking pictures next to it and people wanted to stop and talk to me and say, is that you? (laughs) So I thought that might've been a good attention grabbing technique, but I went down the next day to do it again and the poster was gone. So apparently they are going to replace it, but it might take a few days. I also tried to flyer at the mile, which was not as successful. People are in a hurry and didn't want to speak to me, but the best way I think is close to your venue ask a specific question, start a conversation. When it comes to promotion on social media, what kind of things do you tend to use? Are you all over everything or do you particularly use a particular platform? I am on all of the social media platforms, threads, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and I've even put a post on LinkedIn. So I am extra brave about trying to get the word out about my show. How important it is, I'm not sure, but 
will see it's just making sure that it's visible I know it's caught some people's eyes that may not have otherwise heard about it and vice versa I'm seeing other people's shows by putting my show out there and that creates a sense of a bit of a, a community or interest group ahead of getting up there so that is helpful to me so far in feeling that I'm making connections that way I do have Instagram and Twitter and TikTok, although I have only 80 followers on TikTok, so I'm not sure how much that's helping. I did start tweeting. Someone told me to do this for Ed Fringe a couple months before we came, and I do see some traction there. I, I had um, I was started following the hashtag Ed Fringe to see what people were saying, and people were asking for show recommendations, and I have had a couple people show up saying they saw my show on Twitter. And I try to post about the show and I try to post about other people's shows that I've seen and or people that I know and at least to get support from other artists and to support them. I'm not sure how much is helping because I don't have a lot of followers, but I'm doing my best and I, I think it's okay. I think we're doing okay on the socials. So for the venue you're performing at, was there anything in particular that drove the decision to go there? My main objective in getting a room was making sure it was with someone who was happy for me to do a short run. And I found that the time for me wasn't as important as long as it was a short run basically in the middle. And I was very lucky to find that with just the tonic. In terms of setting the price of my tickets, I've got a mix. It's a pay up front if you want to guarantee but there's also a pay as you want if you turn up on the night so I will have to have a bucket strategy when I get there. I submitted to all the big ones um, as I said I've never been here before so I just took recommendations you know two said no one didn't answer one gave me an answer late after I'd already chosen the space at the point that I did it it was kind of um a shot in the dark, but I'm very happy with the venue that I got. And I'm very happy with the time slot that I got. I'm performing at 1730, which is 530. And I think it's a great time. I think people are out. It's before dinner. I can promote during the day. I can see shows after that. And um, I'm at the Space UK Surgeons Hall. And I, I'm really happy with my theater. So I got lucky. The last week I changed to a 12 o'clock slot. So I will see how the audiences change from the morning to the late afternoon. When it comes to looking at progress, how relaxed are you in terms of ticket sales? Do you refresh it every 10 minutes or are you fairly relaxed about how things go? In terms of how relaxed I am, I'm feeling more relaxed that I know that I've sold tickets for every night that I'm there. So there will be people in the room. So that makes me feel very good because that's more than I expected when I set out to do this. and. I am refreshing maybe once a week. And when I get up there, I don't expect I'm really going to have time to, to do that other than just before the performance and, and checking the ticket status then. So, yeah, I'm, I'll just see how it goes. I'm pretty relaxed at this point, although I'm very busy and one step in front of the other trying to fit everything in. I have been checking my ticket sales probably once a day. And they're, the first three days were great. The next two, the fourth and the fifth kind of dropped off a little bit. But there's also a lot of people that show up at the door. So this has been interesting. And I did put um, several tickets on half price sites and two for ones and those kinds of things to see how uh, different angles draw attention. But we'll see. At this point, I'm kind of letting it go. We're a weekend and I'm kind of seeing that whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Are there any particular shows you're looking forward to see or any posters or promotions you've seen? I've got to see that. There's a lot of shows that I want to see by performers that I've seen before or listened to podcasts of or listened to their radio shows or, you know, I've seen them around a lot. So they've all, they're already naturally in my brain in terms of social media stuff that I've seen. The, there's the team behind skank and who are now doing please love me that looks interesting because they're very good at what they do so i'm looking forward to see what they do next so that stood out already thanks very much for taking part have a great fringe thanks for listening if you enjoyed this check out our other episodes where we speak to a number of performers about their experiences at the edinburgh fringe as well as with creatives in other industries about making creativity pay